Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to HR Katha Presents Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me. For this episode, we have Indrani Chatterjee, Group Chief People Officer, All Cargo Logistics, an Indian logistics company which has presence across 180 countries with the employee strength of 10,000 plus. Indrani has been with All Cargo for the last three years. Prior to this, she worked with Price Hard of Waterhouse and Cooper's Vodafone and PepsiCo India. Indrani, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Prajwal. Thank you for having me in and very, very happy to share my experience in this very, very innovative concept called happiness.me. Okay. So uh, how do you define happiness at the workplace? Have you set certain parameters for a happy workplace? So Prajal, if I have to tell you, my philosophy of happiness at workplace is very simple and not when I became the HR director or I stepped into the CXO uh, domain, uh, but even when I was an executive or whether when I was uh, in a mid-level management, the definition for me as far as happiness at work is concerned was like two things. Uh, I should not say, oh my God, it's Monday morning again. And I shouldn't be saying, thank God it's Friday, which means I am going to enjoy whatever I'm doing. Neither I will look forward towards a Friday evening, nor I would feel uh, very, very frustrated at a Monday morning. So okay. happiness for me is like uh, waking up every day with that similar kind of energy and going to work. Okay. But uh, tell me something, you know, as an HR head, uh, you know, you are responsible for your uh, teams' overall mental well-being or the happiness question. You know. So, how do you how do you ensure that you know people are happy? You know, for that, have you set any parameters? You know, if this happens, I would consider you know my people to be happy. If this does not happen, you know they they they, they seem to be unhappy. So, are there any set you know rules, certain parameters, certain eva evaluation? Uh, you know standards for that so there are multiple evaluation standards that are available in the organization both internally and externally there are multiple rating agencies which will rate you on the employee health which will rate you on the happiness quotient which is like uh, whether you uh, it's a great place to work or there are there are there are multiple other rating agencies which will be there and then you get scores, you are in the top 10, you are in the top 50, you are in the top 100, or you are not there. At the same time, I have seen and I have been working with so many organizations, all big, big, large global companies. They have their own employee health survey parameters. They have their own employee health survey index. And of course, also we take help from the external market. But one thing that I, I have realized and understood, rating is one thing. That is for the HR to show the business and the business heads and the CEO reviews that, okay, look, these are these are the scores and this is how my people are showing their happiness to us. At the same time, the moment you work, uh, you enter into an organization, the vibe that you get, the smiles the that you see, is more important, the, yes. the, pulse is, the pulse that you get, the energy that you feel from the floor is second to none. No scores, no certifications, will actually replace that energy, that vibe, that positivity if your employees are really, really happy in the organization. So I would say, uh, yeah, the scores are there. I have piles of scores. Uh, yeah, that scores are different. Yeah, those of, are external yeah. parameters. To yeah, that. Yeah. But internally, yeah. are there any, any parameters that you you know, you know have defined? It, it, could be any, you know, it could be less complaints from employees, you know? When, when there there could be multiple, Prajal. There could yeah. be multiple. One is definitely less complaints, less attrition, people willing to come to office, people willing to uh, do additional work without being too pushed, people able to meet their targets, always gunning for targets. The level of responses that you get from people, level of participation in any of, say, for example, you are organizing an engagement initiatives and you go up to the rooftop and you say that out of 1,000 people that are available in that building that day, only 50 have come. Can you say that your employees are happy and engaged? No. So 
so these are very intangible things which over the years i have realized that if your people are happy they will come up they will come forth they will participate they will be they will be taking responsibility for organizing various things which is not part of their domain uh, and yet they will be happy they will have lot of energy they will not take additional leaves all of those okay. everything that gives people happy okay uh, tell, tell you tell me something you know uh, all cargo is present in different countries you know you, you are present almost in around 180 countries we are Obviously, present in 180 countries and yeah. 300 offices globally 300 offices globally now you know the cultural context in every country is very different yes so, so it it is not same you know what keeps you know what probably keeps us indians happy would not have you know that the same things would not be uh, would not work in say south of america so how do you as a you know group chief people officer what do you think what triggers happiness in different countries have you seen anything different anything unique you know which probably works in other countries and not uh, in india or something which works in india does not work in other countries you know so of course there are there is this very big theory on hofstede which hofstede had designed on the cross cultural happiness cross cultural behavior etc which says that why somebody in us behaves in certain manner and somebody in sweden behaves in certain manner and somebody from africa uh, behaves completely different keeping aside that like for example in indians we love to work hard but uh, parts of europe they would love to have the work life balance they would have a very set pattern of work hours and then they would like to go back home and then enjoy with their family in indians we uh, to some extent we we are comfortable in blending our work life with, with the work hours and the family hours but in in the western world it is not much again in us people are pretty hard working and then they would they would also some portion of us would would have um, i would say a blurred work life balance somebody would have a very very distinct segmented work life balance have you said that coming to your question if i have seen anything i have see, i have worked with like so many people across so many countries in my uh, career not only in all cargo but in price waterhouse coopers as yeah. well i have seen one thing uh, that the human nature remains by far same what pains you or what pains me by far and large is similar to what pains somebody in us or uk now what are the things apart from those work life balance and all of those what are the broad three things which i feel as an hr professional actually motivates or demotivates an individual one is whether you have a purpose in the work whether you feel that the work that you are doing you you are adding value to the system and your work is getting recognized i think that's the first and foremost important if i don't have a clarity that what i am doing and where it is going and if my work is actually adding value to the overall organization somewhere i would feel that okay fine i'm coming to office going back home taking the money at the end of the uh, month uh, in terms of salary or bonus or whatever but i don't know what is the purpose for my existence in this organization so telling that employee that look even if if he is a frontliner telling them that how it actually ties with the big picture is very important so the purpose of my existence in the organization is one thing that keeps people extremely motivated and this is not nothing from any mba schools and nothing from any mba books this is pure play my experience that's number 1 number 2 um almost 8 to 10 year or 10 hours we spend in office which is like more than 60 70% of our waking hours if i yeah. come and if i am not happy if my relationship with my boss is not happy if my relationship with my colleague is not happy if i am not enjoying the work if i am always thinking that oh okay i am doing this somebody else will uh, find fault in me or somebody else will not be happy with me or i am not doing the right thing such as that constant tension if there is there i don't think anybody will be happy so so the relationship with your immediate stakeholder whether it is your manager whether it is your peer or whether it is your junior it's a very very critical element for the happiness quotient in the organization i come i work freely without any fear of consequence i am happy 
I come here and every time I think that my boss is going to breathe down my neck, my peers are going to stab me, my, my juniors are not going to listen to me. How can I be happy? You, you give me pounds and pounds of money at the end of the month, but I will not be happy. So that is there. And third, and the, uh, I would say another important aspect is if I feel that whatever job I am doing, I'm adequately rewarded. And okay. that reward would definitely be a part of it, definitely would be the monetary gain, but a huge part would also be whether I am being recognized for the hard work that I am doing, whether the work that I'm doing, a simple pat on the back, somebody coming and telling, wow, you have done a great job. I think that, that, is, that, is what you're that itself is a big, big element in the in the whole happiness quotient thing. We always say that catch uh, uh, catch somebody doing wrong, but I think the organization should flip it and say that catch uh, somebody doing something right, and just go and put up a pad, a, a smiley badge, something that you have. Okay, I have noticed you have done something simple, simple, simple thing like helping a helping a colleague with 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 a with a, with a uh, assignment or you go to a coffee vending machine and you, when you return, you bring another coffee for your colleague who is sitting uh, next to you and very busy and cannot go for the coffee. Those are the very simple thing. And you and somebody recognizes that and comes and says, wow, I just noticed that you served a coffee for your colleague. Imagine that person will constantly repeat that because he knows that somebody has seen that. But that is very personal in nature. How do you inculcate that behavior or that culture in, in an organization? Can you, can very, you do it in a very yeah. structured way? Very simple. As I said, catch doing something right. And then display it. We generally call people and, and tell them that they are doing something wrong in public. But if somebody is doing something right, we call them in the room and then give that acknowledgement. If we just flip it and just announce the good work in a public forum and say that, you know what, it's as simple as, I saw Prajol bringing additional cup of coffee for his colleague. And that is announced in the floor. Don't you think that simple behavior will be replicated by other people? Yes, certainly. I do. And it doesn't require big agencies to come to you with a big engagement platform and big money to reward you and do something, something. It doesn't. It is just like the manager have noticed announces in the forum in a public forum in the floor that Prajol has done this. And Prajol is happy. Prajol is happy. That cascades down, that spreads. And maybe 10 days later, everybody is bringing a cup of coffee for anybody. We had one initiative long time back in one of my organization, you bring sunshine to work. So we had a big board um, whereby we used to pin up um, posters and say that so-and-so brings sunshine to my work. Like somebody has done something good and he has got the sunshine in the work. So we, the so whole... Nominate uh, some, yeah. He, yes, nominate somebody in that uh, thing. So those are very simple, non-tangible, no-cost kind of initiatives. And those are galore. Like it is like uh, galore. Like not like somebody who has done extraordinary work in terms of uh, overachieving the target, etc. That's there. That's for the boss to manage but this kind of behavior actually changes the culture okay do you think professional achievements or professional success uh, leads to happiness at the workplace means how much of would that contribute to you know it does or workplace happiness? it does how can i say professional achievement does not uh, give you success you slog and you work for that achievement and when you get that why will you not be happy? Of course you will be happy. But again, it is not every day that you get that uh, extraordinary achievement. You ha you work for six months and then you uh, match the target. You work for 12 months and then you get the target. So, of course, uh, all those achievements gives you target. At the end of the achievement, if you are rewarded for your achievement, it gives bigger bigger happiness. Uh, uh, if, you're, if you're CEO, if you're business head, if you're manager, acknowledges your effort if you get promoted of course that creates happiness that creates happiness that creates validation that what i am doing is i am is 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 something that is, that is expected and i'm i'm on the right track uh, all 
all those things definitely adds to the happiness i cannot say, say that, that, that soul can't be uh, you know that soul can't be the, just the trigger of happiness you know there could be other i i'm other, just telling yeah. that achievement is there but not if 1000 people not 1000 people will be achieving at that level every day but how you keep people happy every day is how you are you smiling at the at the next person when you enter the office are you wishing it are you telling pleases and thank yous more often if the blue boy is coming and giving you a cup of coffee are you just taking the coffee and not even looking at him or you are just thanking him or you are asking him that did you also have a cup of coffee yeah so these are the very small things for an everyday happiness आपके आपका बिग हैप्पीनेस के लिए तो एनुअल रिवॉर्ड एंड रिकॉग्निशन प्रोग्राम है फैमिली डे है एनुअल इवेंट है बिग ट्रॉफीज है कैश वाउचर्स है ट्रेवल वाउचर्स है सब है बट दैट इज वन थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज हाउ डू यू एनश्योर यूर रिमेनिंग थ्री सिक्सटी फोर डेज आर है टॉप परफॉर्मर्स बट इट द चैलेंज लाइज इन यू नो कीपिंग इवन दी लो परफॉर्मर्स है so that they that's, can improve on board that that's, that's how you upgrade. that's how you yeah that's how you you make the organization a happy organization you don't make an organization happy with the top 5% top performer getting rewards promotions awards certificates every year you make the organization happy by the balance 95% who would be happy every day coming to office smiling with their colleagues sharing the lunch sharing their pains and then in the process doing the work that's how you do the good work you are talking about you know the uh, you know work life balance you know how people in europe uh, they uh, you know value work from home rather here it is more about you know professional achievement and doing hard work uh, recently you know the post covid uh, when people were getting back to office many um, employees they when they were given a choice that you know would you want to continue working from home or do you want a 10% pay rise many of them chose that you know okay. that we want to work from home and not take a 10% pay rise do you think that trend the mindset is changing in india as well people yes. are giving more importance to family work life balance to to own uh, personal uh, freedom the personal space and not just work prajal i would uh, say yes and no to this question yeah. i cannot say a blanket yes because people employees from india comes from various socio economic background segment yeah where that additional 10% would give them an additional 10% comfort uh so i would say i cannot say a blanket emphatic yes to this question but i would say yes the trend is changing there are people who are ready to take a pay cut at the cost of working from home they are ready to just compromise on their compensation because they can stay at home they can be with their family they have small kids at home or aging parents that's important or they'd have to do less travel they have lot of me time but that's a that's a different segment and then you have a segment where the the person is the sole earning member and he have four or five people to feed feed so there the person has to go to office get that additional uh, money whatever he gets to make the life little smoother smoother okay so you are saying it totally depends upon what background the employee comes from or or you know or what stage of life that person is in absolutely if you are at a very senior level you can do away with that 10% Yeah. but imagine when you are starting your job with a with a very basic salary you would like to work hard to get that additional 10% no so today today's younger generation also you know they are very different they come from very affluent families today's you generation know? is different today's different yeah. generation is different they come from a background where both the parents are still working they work mostly they work uh, work because out of passion uh and it, it's here and now uh like they would like to see what is here and now they are not even focused on anything long term be it provident fund be it gratuity they need the cash in hand so that's 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 the uh, structure but i'm just yeah. talking about the entire workforce that we have right now yeah that's yeah, the, that's that's the yeah. you you have worked with you know companies like uh 
Pepsi, Vodafone, PwC. You know, they are, they they must have got very different set of employees. Now at uh, all cargo, you will have a very uh, you know diagonally or dramatically different set of employees. You know, more of generalist kind of thing where there it will be more of specialists in PwC. And I'm, I'm saying you know in PwC the people would be specialists, but you know if you compare it with all cargo people would be more of generalists you know how 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 the, does the happiness portion differ in two sets of you know the, the two sets of world or you know two different companies uh, so uh, yes the you, you the can segment... share some example your observation yeah. anything you know you what what the segmentation of of employees would be different because of the nature of the industry the of business, yes. uh, one is a consulting uh, segment another is a logistic segment uh, however if i actually break it down to further details um, these employees are doing what they have been trained to do based on their educational qualification so for them it's a job whether a consult consultant is going to a consulting uh, going to a client and um, advising on a particular assignment or a logistics executive going going and getting an assignment from a client and then delivering as per the expectation of the client yeah. so uh, coming to uh, to the happiness quotient i think the happiness quotient lies in achieving the end objective whether the consulting uh, guy, whether the consultant goes to the client, uh, gets the gets the job done on behalf of client in a manner uh, the client expects, that will bring him a happiness. Similarly, the logistics executive, if go if he goes to a client, gets an order for a shipment and delivers the shipment. Uh, once the shipment is delivered, gets good uh, acknowledgement from the client, he will be happy. So from a from a happiness point of view, I would say a job well done would give them equal amount of happiness. Uh, these two people thrives in an ecosystem which is completely different from each other. Yes. Uh, so the consultant would thrive in a in a in a in an environment of consultants and their clients. Logistics executives would thrive in a different kind of environment. They are happy in their own way in their own uh, success and uh, they would be uh, they would be frustrated in their own failure. I cannot compare them, but if you see, I have seen both of them getting frustrated when the job is not getting done. I have seen both of them getting frustrated if they are they are not getting the promotion or they are not getting the hike that they are deserving, or if they are thinking that okay, fine, my colleague did less than me but got a better increment. A better, so yeah. it 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 is the human aspect of basic that employee human characters or very basic, basic human. human character irrespective of that business card that you carry so that that remains the same probably you know that way. but but they but they come from a different ecosystem you know probably what you know makes you know people at all cargo or i'm just saying you know uh, you know uh, up, up, a person in a logistics company happy might not be the same at an uh, you know a consultancy business i i would say it is a job well done wherever you are uh, for me when i was with the consulting firm it was a job well done and the recognition that i got uh, made me happy or made me unhappy similarly in my current assignment if it if i do a job in a proper manner if i get the due recognition i am happy so I would say, irrespective of the industry, it is it is my personal at attribute and the external response to the to my job done uh, creates my happiness or unhappiness. Okay, tell me, you you, you probably started your career in the late nineties. Uh, uh, yes, uh, early two thousand. Early two thousand. So early two thousand, late nineties, you know, and now you know where you know say around two decades later, do you see, see the work environment, a change in a work environment, the change in the workplace, the change in the interpersonal relationship between employees? 
very much very much when i started my work in 99 2000 yeah. uh, first of all uh, internet email was just hitting us okay. today you can't even imagine a life without an email without an internet without google without anything without linkedin without the social media everything um, the work and the nature of the work have increased a lot and it have that the speed has increased a lot mainly because of the medium uh, yeah. because you, ha you, yeah, you I, have I do, a, yeah i do also tell my team you know it's like when we started as a journalist we did not have google to do our research you know exactly so, so, the, so the speed has increased and if your speed is increasing i think with speed competition has increased uh with speed uh, and when competition increases stress level increases so 20 years back when we started working work was done definitely work was done but not at this speed and the competition i would say was much lesser than what we see now and with competition the stress level was also much lesser the stress level was much less you're saying you know much less i would not say that the workload was not there workload was there definitely workload was there but i think the stress was much lesser so what what, what has you know apart from that you know that speed that you are talking about you know we want faster delivery of work apart from that what has contributed or you know what has brought in that stress among employees you know is it the changing lifestyle is it the changing world is it you know is it 20 the change years back whatever we had seen, yeah. 20 years back prajol whatever we had seen it has completely changed everything has changed if the entire medium of survival has changed okay yeah. we are surviving on a digital platform right now and with the digital platform everything is at the click of a button so for example i i'll tell you a, a simple example and how the stress accumulates uh, when you were in school or when uh, I, I don't know when you started work. So, for example, when you were in school, you must have gone to school. You must I started have in ninety-seven. Yes. Yeah, you started in work uh, ninety-seven. So, when you were in school, you must have after school hours. You must have played for an hour or two with your friends, and then come back home. Yeah. Or you might have chatted here and there, and then might have come back home. Your parents might have expected that Prajol will be home by so and so uh, because he is playing etc etc today because of the mobile the moment your son or your daughter gets into the car you will just check whether the person is there if he, he or she is half an hour late your stress will build a why is she why is she late this etc because you know that that mobile medium is there to let you know that she is here if she is less uh, if she is not there if she is late by 40, 15 minutes also, your stress builds up. Why is she late? Why why the phone call is not coming? This was not happening when you were in school, when I was in school. So similarly, from a work point of view, because we are working on a digital platform, everything has to be delivered as of yesterday. Because you have everything in your in uh, at the click of the button. If it is not getting delivered, why it is not getting delivered? Say, for example, for a consulting firm, there are three, four players who are going to a client. It is just like the who goes first gets the assignment. To get there first, there is a lot of action and extension at the backstage. That kind of stress, that kind of, I would say, back and forth, that kind of tussle is increasing. Uh, with that, I would say there are too many startups that are coming. The startups are yeah. coming with, with a different kind of ecosystem. They have a lot of disposable money. They have a different kind of uh, work culture. Their speed is different. Whether it is going to survive for the long time or not, that's immaterial. Here yeah. and now, the startups are giving you a big thrust. Okay, five years down the line, what happens to thousands of uh, startups that, that actually... Uh, 
cropped up five years back, nobody is going to see. At this yeah, moment, they are very ruthless in their approach as well. They are very ruthless in their approach. They are picking up employees. They will yeah. give uh, hundred percent high. So there is a competition inside. There is a stress inside. There is an attrition threat inside. Then again, on the digitalization, since it is automation, whoever automates a process faster delivers the work to the client faster. So there is a pressure to innovate. There is a pressure to um, to automate. So everywhere there is a pressure to deliver fast. So that's why I said it's the speed that is actually killing everything. So speed is actually adding to stress. It's my opinion. Somebody yeah. might yeah. say different no, things, no, no, but no, obviously, you know, from, it's, from it's, where I see things, it is the speed. No, no, interesting, interesting. Tell me something, you know, we, you know, these days we see people talking about mental health, mental health, mental health. You know, everybody is talking about mental health. But I see, you know, it is it is being, you know, it's it's like a drawing room discussion rather than actually being implemented on ground. Companies are not doing enough around mental health, and and it is it is just a boardroom or a drawing room discussion that is happening and trying to get media or attention or you know it, it become like a pr exercise do you agree to that so mental health especially in our country even though people like dipika padukone and others would come and say live love laugh and all of those i think mental health till date is still considered as a taboo people do not want to open up and why they do not want to open up it is just for the fear of consequence if I open yeah. up, A, I will be ridiculed, B, people will not understand, three, I might lose my job, four, people might not be uh, trusting me or telling that, okay, fine, uh, he cannot, he or she cannot do anything because he, because he or she is going through some mental trauma and all of those. Uh, I think the awareness of mental health should be more uh, in a more positive manner, that it is not a taboo. It is just like you are diabetic, you have a high blood pressure, you have a cardiac problem. Similarly, because of certain uh, changes in the uh, hormones in your brain, you have a mental health issue. You are feeling depressed, you are not feeling happy. That's where the happiness thing comes. But that, that is from happy. people's perspective. But what I That's wanted to, yeah, but from an organization's perspective, I see a lot of talking being done rather than, you know, activities rather than actually on ground Taking something action. is being done yeah for the employees so i'll give you a perspective to that and in in last couple of organizations that i have worked with or i'm working with everywhere we have provided mental health support to our employees especially during the covid time and post covid time most of the organization have provided support to their employees because of the huge mental uh, health issues that had cropped up during the COVID, uh, during the pandemic, because people yes. were actually quarantined, people did not go out, they did not socialize. So there was, there was an impact on the mental health. Helplines were created, counselors were attached, people were encouraged to come up to talk to the counselors and to take the help of the helpline, counseling helpline. I would say less than 1% have actually availed the services simply because they did not want to disclose their identity. Okay. So employees, trust me, check with any organization, especially during COVID the last two years, every organization have tried to do something for their employees. It is not only a board, uh, boardroom discussion. Okay. They have tried, but, but what we failed, and I have to give it to us on the management, where we failed, we failed in giving them that confidence that if you come out and if you take the help, we are there and there is no fear right. of consequence. We just gave them that medium to take the help, but we did not give them that confidence to confidence come to out. Us. Come out and take the help. That's where, as a management, I would say we failed. Okay. Well, great. That was interesting. And uh, it, was, it was really nice talking to you and great insights. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Thank you. Always, yeah. always. Uh, I would be happy to give my insights whenever you want. Thank you Thank so you. much. So that was Thank Indrani you. today, you know, sharing her uh, definition and uh, sharing her happiness.
portion with us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you my audience.